For anyone who lived through the Monday Night Wars as a fan, the thought of the NWO and the WWE was almost like a dream come true. Here are the guys that, at one point, were booked as invaders from the other company, coming in to take over WCW and destroy the opposition. The NWO, like it or not, was extremely effective in swaying the ratings in favour of WCW, and the NWO, in my opinion, it's one of the most important factions in the history of the wrestling business. So when Vince McMahon acquired WCW and its trademarks, the prospect of the NWO coming to the WWF was exciting, even after WCW had run the faction into the ground. In the WWF, the NWO would maybe have a chance to reset and re-establish themselves as a force in pro wrestling once again. The question is... Were they at all successful? In this video, we look at the New World Order in the WWE. It would take nearly a year after the WCW acquisition for the NWO to appear on WWF programming. The three original members of the group, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan, were all still being paid via their Time Warner contracts after Vince McMahon acquired WCW, so they decided to stay at home and collect money until their contracts expired. As reported by Bruce Pritchard on his podcast, Shane McMahon got in contact with Scott Hall and tried to secure the Outsiders on a few occasions, but it never worked out. Eventually, talks would progress and expand to include the NWO's third man, and Hall Nash and Hulk Hogan would be brought in at WWF No Way Out in 2002, just in time to build for WrestleMania 18. The backstage majority were against bringing the NWO into the locker room, but Vince McMahon felt it was a good business move. It's been reported that, in particular, the locker room wasn't too keen on having Kevin Nash among them. At the time, Vince McMahon and Ric Flair in Storyline had joint ownership of the WWE. Unhappy with having to share his empire and tired of how Ric Flair was running things, Vince McMahon announced in a memorable segment that he was going to kill his own creation and inject a poison into the WWE. As if Vince McMahon couldn't be the sole owner of the company, then the company should just die off. McMahon revealed to the world that he would be bringing in the NWO to kill the WWF. I remember seeing this segment and going absolutely nuts. This to me was exciting. The WCW invasion angle didn't work out so well and now the WWE had a chance to try again by bringing in three of the biggest names WCW had. Along with this, I was always a big Razor Ramon fan and while I knew he wasn't in the best place at the time, it would be great to see Scott Hall in the WWE once again. It shouldn't be forgotten also how much of a big deal it was to have Hulk Hogan back in the WWE. We all have our own opinions on Hogan, but we can't deny he played a huge role in making professional wrestling what it is today. Hulk Hogan would be coming back to the WWE after a 9 year absence. I was genuinely excited to see what the NWO was going to do in the WWF and I know hindsight is 2020, and I know the comment section is going to be filled with comments about how it was a failure but at the time it was a really exciting announcement for me anyway. As mentioned, the NWO would be making their way to the WWF at No Way Out 2002. The show started off with that familiar NWO music, the screen turned black and white and out walked Hall, Nash and Hogan. It was a homecoming of sorts, not just the debut of three WCW guys. It felt more like a huge return painted black and white as the three men brought over the gimmick that made them so popular in WCW. The crowd welcomed the three men back, unlike the lukewarm responses some of the WCW roster had received the year prior. The NWO got into the ring, they said to the crowd that they were happy to be back but upset to be misunderstood as a poison and they couldn't wait to entertain the great WWF fans and prove everybody wrong. 
All they wanted was a chance. During the show, they bumped into The Rock, who made fun of each NWO member in quite a funny segment. The main event featured Chris Jericho vs Steve Austin that night, and the NWO ended up interfering in the match, costing Stone Cold the Undisputed Championship. So the NWO had already found themselves an enemy in Stone Cold Steve Austin. The next night on Raw, after the NWO caused some issues for Austin that led to the rattlesnake getting arrested, Hulk Hogan made his way to the ring on his own. Hogan thanked the fans and talked about how happy he was to be back in a WWF ring, but he said the fans turned on him and they took Hulk Hogan for granted. This prompted The Rock to come to the ring, as wrestling's past met wrestling's future on Monday Night Raw. Rock challenged Hogan to a match at WrestleMania 18. Hulk said that Rock was nothing but the flavour of the month, and he accepted The Rock's fantasy match challenge at WrestleMania. The Rock then took a beating from the NWO, and as he was getting took for medical attention, Hogan rammed his truck into the ambulance that had Rock inside it. The NWO had targeted the two biggest stars in the WWE, Steve Austin and The Rock. At WrestleMania 18, Hulk Hogan would be facing The Rock, while Scott Hall would go up against Steve Austin. Steve Austin has since said that this was not the match he wanted at WrestleMania in 2002, but he had to go along with the booking decision. Along with this, Scott Hall was still not where he needed to be with his sobriety. While he was trying to stay on the straight and narrow, Hall was taking medication to assist in his goals and he admits he wasn't able to perform to a high standard. With that being said, Steve Austin vs Scott Hall at WrestleMania 18 wasn't a bad match, it just wasn't a great WrestleMania match. It was what it was, Steve Austin picked up the win. Hulk Hogan vs The Rock at WrestleMania should rightfully go down as one of the most iconic matches in the history of WrestleMania. This match is the perfect example of two performers having the crowd in the palm of their hands, even without planning out a technical masterpiece or a thrilling fast paced match. The Toronto crowd were hyped to see Hulk Hogan return at WrestleMania, which must have been an unexpected reaction for everyone involved in putting this match together. If you watch the match, both Rock and Hogan switch roles after noticing the crowd reaction as Hulk wrestles the match as a babyface while Rock shows some heel tendencies, something we hadn't seen from The Rock in a long time. It was a really good match and the crowd most definitely made it special. The icons involved in the match were smart enough to read the audience and adjust accordingly. The Rock won the match, meaning the NWO did not win any matches at all on their pay-per-view match debuts. Due to the overwhelming response Hogan had received at WrestleMania 18, the decision was made to put the red and yellow back on the Hulkster and turn him back into a good guy. Hogan had left the NWO, so it was time for the Outsiders to expand the faction. On the March 21st, 2002 edition of SmackDown, Kevin Nash was booked to face The Rock, and this would be Nash's first ever match on SmackDown. The match ended when Scott Hall interfered on behalf of Kevin Nash. This prompted Hulk Hogan to run to the ring, but afterwards, Axe Pac made his way to the ring, assisting the Outsiders and joining the NWO. Scott Hall, Axe Pac and Kevin Nash were drafted to Raw in the first ever brand extension where they began feuding with Kane. During this time, Kevin Nash was written off TV due to an injured bicep. X-Pac would continue feuding with Kane while Scott Hall entered into a feud with Bradshaw, culminating in a match at Backlash 2002 which Hall won. The Big Show then rejoined the NWO on the April 22nd edition of Raw where he turned on Stone Cold Steve Austin. By this point, Scott Hall was seriously worn out. On top of struggling with his own personal issues, Scott Hall is said that he was booked for more in-ring appearances than what was written into his contract. Unable to continue on, Scott Hall asked for his release, and it was granted. What has become somewhat forgotten during this period in the NWO's history is that Ric Flair aligned himself with the group for a few weeks. 
Flair turned heel while he was the owner of Raw and began feuding with Steve Austin and Hulk Hogan. Flair would team up with The Big Show during this period and he was also responsible for bringing Booker T into the NWO. While he was never announced as a member of the group, the Nature Boy did quite a lot to help the faction during this time. So now the NWO consisted of Axe Pac, Booker T, The Big Show and the returning Kevin Nash. In desperate need of a big name to add to the group, Kevin Nash announced that none other than Shawn Michaels was the newest member of the faction. Shawn had not been seen in the WWE for quite some time, so it was great and quite a shock to see him back here in the NWO colours. Shawn would be the only original NWO member in history to never wrestle in WCW. Michaels though would be more of an enforcer for the group instead of an in-ring talent. HBK proceeded to kick Booker T out of the faction one week after his debut and he made it clear that the NWO would be recruiting Triple H into the faction. At the King of the Ring in 2002, Triple H was scheduled to face The Undertaker for the undisputed title and before the match, the NWO gave Triple H a big hug and told him all he needed to do was throw up the click hand gesture if he needed help. It turned out Triple H didn't ask for the NWO's assistance, but the group would continue to tease Triple H joining in the weeks that followed. Unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever way you may look at it, the whole storyline came to a screeching halt and never got finished. On the July 8th episode of Raw, Kevin Nash tore his quadriceps in his first match back after sitting on the injured list for three months due to the torn bicep. This injury pretty much spelled the end for the NWO in the WWE. The following week on Raw, the NWO's music played in the arena but instead of the group coming to the ring, Vince McMahon made his way down the ramp. In a quite uncharacteristic announcement, Vince said that this would be the last time we ever hear the NWO music on WWE TV as the group was now officially disbanded and the NWO era was now history. On the same show, Vince McMahon announced that Eric Bischoff was the new general manager of Raw. The NWO have since made sporadic appearances on special episodes of Raw and even at WrestleMania, usually consisting of Scott Hall, Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan. All three men were separately inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame and you best believe the NWO will also be inducted as a faction in the coming years. Fans today like to kick up a fuss whenever the NWO returns for reunion shows or specials, saying that they take away time from new stars. While this may be true, there is still value in the NWO brand. Just the logo itself has become iconic in wrestling and NWO shirts are still widely seen in WWE audiences, so the brand still does turn a profit. With all this in mind, there is no doubt that the NWO magic was gone in the WWE. The group didn't feel spontaneous or cutting edge anymore, and instead it felt just like another heel wrestling faction. There were some moments of greatness, such as Hogan vs Rock and the NWO return at No Way Out in 2002, but when the group added members like Axe Pac and Big Show, it just wasn't the same. <laughs>